Hello and welcome to MATLAB programming for numerical computations course. We are in module 1, introduction to MATLAB programming. This is lecture 1-4 where we are going to cover uh, using files in MATLAB. So, MATLAB files come in two types, scripts and functions and that is what we are going to cover in this particular lecture. Okay? Uh, we have done this already uh, a few times in the, few, in the previous lecture. In order to start editor in MATLAB, we need to type edit followed by the file name. When we do that, the editor opens a file called file name dot m. Dot m is uh, an extension to say state that these are ma uh, MATLAB code files. MATLAB code files are written in ASCII. Uh, so, they are basically readable by any text editor. MATLAB provides an excellent editor which is what you should use for typing any MATLAB file. Uh, indeed, you can use say notepad or any other editor as well which is something that I will not recommend you to do. Okay? So, do use MATLAB editor as we have done before in the previous lectures. For more help, you can go to the MATLAB's own website for writing a MATLAB program, the link for which is given over here. Okay? So, as I said, there are two types of MATLAB files, script files and function files. So, what we have done in the previous two lectures is we have written small snippets of codes in order to calculate multiple things, for example, Fibonacci series or the height of the ball at various times, so on and so forth. Okay? All that we have done in those two lectures, uh, we have done it using what is known as MATLAB script files. So, what are the script files? So, script files are nothing but files that contain sequence of MATLAB commands and these sequence, uh, these commands sorry, are, are executed one after the other as if they were typed on the command prompt itself. So, let us look at the files that we had created. So, this was the, the file that we had created for uh, uh, the uh, trajectory of a ball thrown vertically upwards. So, these commands are executed one after the other when we click on run or when we type the name of the file and press enter in the command prompt. Likewise, we can look at FIBO using while or FIBO using for, this, these are what are known as script files. The difference between script file and a function file is that function file starts with the first line starts with a command called function. So, the, the syntax for a function file is going to be function space followed by square bracket separated output variables. So, say out 1, out 2 and so on equal to the name of the function, my function name or any name that you choose followed by input variables in 1, in 2, so on and so forth. Okay? Keep in mind that the input variables are in circular brackets, the output variables are in square brackets. Having an output variable or an input variable is optional. So, if you do not have any output variable, the function is just going to look like function, my fun function name with uh, input variables which are comma separated. Input variables are also optional. If you have output variables but no input variables, you can just say uh, out 1, out 2 equal to my function name. And let us say you do not have either input variables or output variables, you can just say my func function equal to my function name. Okay? Uh, the way MATLAB function and scripts work are something that I am going to cover in this particular lecture. But at any point of time, if you feel the need to write a function of this type, you should really not be using a function, but what you really instead need is script. Okay. When you save this function, okay, MATLAB will ask you to save it with the exact same name as the name of the function. So, keep this in mind as far as this particular course is concerned, the name of your function file will be the same as the name of the function that you are using in that function file. Okay. This is going to work for all the functions that we are going to use in this particular lecture. Okay. I am going to close this particular function file, go back to MATLAB and del delete that file name. My function file, I will just click right click over here 
and click on delete and that will delete that particular file. Okay. So, function files are files that take certain inputs, execute a sequence of steps and return the output at the end. Okay. The MATLAB statements are executed in functions own variable space okay. and once the, we exit that function all the variables used are no longer accessible in MATLAB. Let us go back to MATLAB and take the example of Fibonacci using for loop okay. and let us execute that particular command. I will see CLC and I will clear the screen. I will type Fibo using for and where I press enter, let us look at all the variables that were there. We had de declared variable n, declared variable Fibo and variable i. When I will run that particular, uh, run that particular file, all the three variables that were used in the script file are also available in the MATLAB workspace as, it, as can be seen over here. The reason is because a script file shares the same workspace as the thing that was used to call that script file. Because we called a script file from the command prompt, the variables used in the script file are also available in the workspace. Okay? So, script file is nothing but the commands as if they were executed one of the other in the command prompt. Okay, it will do the exact same thing. Okay, let me clear this. Okay, and what I will do this do now is convert this into a function file. In order to do that, all I need to do is say function fibo using for and save this. Okay, I am just doing this to show you how a function differs from a script. This is something you should not be doing. You should not be using a function in this particular way because we want in this particular example, we want to execute the commands one after the other and for this purpose, we need to be using scripts. Okay? So, let us go to MATLAB and now type FIBO using for again. Okay? When we type this and press enter, you see none of the variables are accessible anymore. If I type FIBO, that variable is not accessible because that variable has a scope and the scope of that was in that particular function. So, when this function file is called, n is defined, FIBO is defined, i is defined, computations are done. When we exit that function, n, FIBO and i are completely gone and no longer available in the workspace. If we want to access that in the workspace, we need to use input and output arguments with the function. Okay? So, that comes brings me to the next aspect scoping of the variables. So, the script shares the variables with the workspace, okay? whereas function uses the variables in its own workspace. So, the scoping of the variables used in the function, they have a local scope. The scoping of the variables in the script is the scope is the same as the function or the workspace calling that particular script. Okay? And these functions are going to talk to the, the, the workspace through the input and output variable. So, as I had shown earlier, the syntax for a function is basically going to be output uh, equal to function name and inputs that there is an error over here the function should come before this and not after the equal to sign. Okay? So, we wanted to calculate, let us say this calculate the factorial, we, because this is a single purpose thing, we are going to write a script in order to calculate the factorial, but if we wanted to write a function in order to calculate a function of this sort, we are going to write a function. So, let us go ahead and write a script for calculate, calculating the factorial. So, let us say edit my fact and that is going to be a script. Okay. Calculate factorial of n. So, n equal to let us say 6 fact value equal to 1 that is what we will going to start with for i equal to 1 colon 6 fact value equal to fact value multiplied by i. 
end okay and this is a script because it does not start with a, a function call and i'm going to go to matlab and type my fact okay and all the variables will be accessible in the workspace as we had uh, shown before and fact value is going to be the factorial value 70 okay the other thing that i would want to do is want to make this a bit more the code to be more more better i don't want to use for loop in doing this instead what i'm going to do is use the array uh, function called product so if i give prod 1 colon 6 that's going to calculate the factorial for me okay so i'll go over what this particular command does in a bit let's just execute my fact in matlab and see what let's clear the variables first clear all and clc okay so as you can see in the workspace there are no longer any variables i give the uh, script name my fact and press enter i now have the two variables fact value and n the fact values value is 720 as we had seen before okay let's see what the command product does prod let's say 1 to 6 is what it is going to do is calculate the product of this particular vector the vector 1 to 6 is going to be nothing but 1 2 3 4 5 6 so let me just type that particular thing here so that is nothing but 1 2 3 4 5 6 prod which is operated on this is going to do 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4 and so on up to 6 so that's what exactly i'm going to get as 720 and that's what the script my fact is doing over here okay so that's the script that was the purpose of the script is to run or execute certain commands in matlab command prompt okay now instead if i want to calculate a, a given function and the function that i wanted to calculate was c0 plus c1x plus c2x square up to cn x to the power n for that i'm going to use a, a function file i'll call this edit my func okay and function result equal to my func n okay and what i wanted to do let let's go back over here i want to calculate c0 plus c1x plus c2x square and so on for c0 equal to 1 and c1 equal to 1 by 1 c2 equal to 1 by 2 c3 equal to 1 by 3 so on and so forth okay so what i will do is i will create a vector of uh, the coefficients or let's call this as a vector capital c equal to 1 comma i will put this in square brackets 1 divided by and i have element by element division 1 to n okay so let's go over this once again okay so c i will just say equal to c naught which is 1 okay and after that i need to append 1 by 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on so let's define a vector vec equal to 1 to n so our c is just going to be equal to c comma 1 dot slash vec you recall in the second lecture of this module we had introduced the uh, element by element operation dot slash so what this is going to do is it's going to be do one divided by the first element of vec one divided by second element of vec one divided by third element of vec so on and so forth that it's going to create a vector so we are going to have a vector one followed by one by two followed by one by three up to one by n so that gives a vector of coefficients so now i have c0 i have c1 i have c2 and so on what are the multiplicants over here it's going to be x to the power 0 x to the power 1 x to the power 2 and so on up to x to the power n 
So, for that let us define a vector a. So, a is just going to be equal to x to the power and for that power I am going to use dot caret vec. Okay? So, that is what I am going to get over here. What I need is the first guy is nothing but 1, x to the power 0 is nothing but 1. So, I will append that over here. So, 1 comma x to the power vec. Okay? And my result is going to be result equal to c dot star a. Okay? So, the vector c multiplied by the vector a. So, that is going to be my result and I will end this with end. The command end is optional in a function okay? and I am going to save this as the file my func. Okay? You can see over here that this my func is actually highlighted. The reason is because I have made an error in naming this. The file name is my capital FUNC whereas the name of the function is small func. Okay? Uh, recall that in MATLAB the, uh, all the commands are uh, case sensitive. So, I want to have the function name same as my file name. So, if I click on fix, it will change the function name to capital F. I will just save this and go to MATLAB and run my func, my func n and let us say result equal to my func n, where n was equal to 6. Okay, okay I get an error over here that is because I have not defined my x. So, I need my func n comma x over here and I need to call it with two arguments n and x. So, n was 6 and let us say x was 0 0.1 and I call this particular function and I am going to get this result equal to sum result and that is going to be sum of. So, it is going to be 1 plus uh, uh, 0 0.1 divided by 1, 0 0.1 square divided by 2, 0 0.1 cube divided by 3, so on and so forth and that is going to be my result. Okay? So, see what, I have, what has happened is while doing this particular function, I have made an error. That error was I am calculating C0, I am calculating C1x, I am calculating C2x square and so on up to c n x to the power n, but I have not summed that up in order to calculate the function f. Okay? So, I will go in over here and just change this to say sum c star dot a, save this and now I will call this clear clc okay? and call result equal to my func 6 comma 0 0.1 and I am going to get the result over here. Okay? Uh, inadvertently what I ended up you show ended up showing you over here also is the way we will do debugging. You recall that we got two errors, one was an actual error that stem because I had not defined my input variable x at all which basically meant when it came across this particular com command, what happened was it was not able to calculate because x was not defined. Let me go back to how I had written earlier and run this again. Okay? I will run this again and I got that error undefined function or variable x on line number 6, I went to that particular function on this particular line and realized that I had not defined my x. So, I went ahead and made that change, defined that x and I called that particular function using two arguments as shown over here. The other error that I had done was I was calculating this particular array c star a, but not summing that up. 
when I saw that result which resulted not in a single value which was the sum of that uh, uh, the elements of that array, but which was just the 6 elements of that array, I realized that I needed to add that sum command over here. Okay? So, this is also how we do debugging in MATLAB. Okay? So, let us recap when to use functions and when to use scripts and for beginners that is for most of you guys these are the general guidelines that I have for you. Okay? So, you want to use scripts when you wanted to make small calculations such as factorial or basic computing as we did in the marks mark list example in the previous uh, in the uh, previous lecture or when we wanted to do plotting of some certain functions which we are going to cover in the in the next lecture that's when we want to use scripts when do we want to use functions let's say we want to calculate the values r or result as a function of variables t y so on and so forth so when we want to calculate r as a function of t comma y and so on that's when we want to use functions the second example when we want to use functions is when we want to pass them as uh, to MATLAB functions. For example, in ODE solving example that we saw in Dhoni hitting the 6, we are calculating uh, a function using uh, ODE 45 in MATLAB and we wanted to pass that f of t comma y as a function to ODE 45. That is another example where we are going to use functions. This is something that we are going to cover in module 3 and thereafter, we would not even cover this in module 2, I'm just giving you a brief overview of when to use functions. Third example uh, when to use function is let us say we want to calculate uh, something as a function of temperature, let us say we want to calculate for example, the saturation pressure of steam at various temperatures or we want to calculate uh, let us say a diffusivity of something as a function of concentration or let us say we want to calculate something as a function of voltage and current. So, those properties which we want to calculate as a function of let us say temperature or concentration or current so on and so forth that is when we will use functions. So, these are the three cases when we use functions for all other examples or for all other purposes we are more likely to use scripts rather than functions. Okay? So, with that I come to the end of that lecture of this lecture. What we covered in this lecture is examples of when to use scripts and when to use functions in order to do computations. Scripts is nothing but sequential execution of certain commands as if you wanted to execute them uh, in the calling function or in the calling workspace. Uh, functions are to be used for achieving a specific goal when you want to calculate for example, r as a function of t, y and so on and so forth. Okay? So, these are the main uses of functions and script in MATLAB. We are going to rely heavily on using functions and script in this particular set of uh, lectures from module 2 onwards. Okay? So, with that I come to the end of this particular lecture. Uh, the next lecture is going to be the last lecture in the introduction module. The next lecture is going to cover plotting and program output. Thanks and see you in the next lecture.